Hello. Feast your eyes on this. It's a 2005 Mitsubishi Colt 1.3 Elegance. The Colt came along in 2004 and struggled its way all the way to 2013. Um, it came in that period of where a Super Mini was trying to be bigger but didn't really carry it off and the crossover didn't exist so it's got this kind of awkwardly high profile um, giving you loads of headroom that you don't really need but not really much other space. Um, the facelift it got in 2008 gave it a nose that kind of looked a bit like a Lancer which, which added a bit more appeal to it but um, the shape certainly doesn't have much appeal at all despite my uh, top spec alloy wheels. I just splashed out 250 quid on this bad boy uh, which is a hundred quid more than the gold high and eye accent that I just reviewed. So Why did I spend so much on this one? Well, take a look Oh yes Full dead cow in a Mitsubishi cult But not only did 250 quid get me a full leather interior it got me four tires with decent tread, nine months MOT, and elegant spec means four electric windows, electric mirrors, fun fog lights, alloy wheels, air conditioning, it would have had a CD player, and doesn't stop there, the optional 450 quid tilt slide electric sunroof. Broken, dented, cracked. Ooh, my favorite person, rest. Also the remote has these horrible rubber buttons that have perished and the remote locking doesn't work. The one key barrel on the driver's door is C solid so it can't be locked. So place your bets as to whether it'll sell or be stolen first. This one has the 1.3 litre petrol engine producing 94 brake horsepower. Quite a revvy little engine. Um, it's good fun. Really good fun actually. Um, it's got this snappy little gearbox which is infinitely more pleasant than the likes of a Renault Clio at the time. Um, and despite its quite tall body um, ruining the handling a bit, it's actually not a bad little chassis which by the way, it shares with a smart 4.4. I didn't actually know that before I did a bit of research on this thing. But unfortunately, the steering kind of limits any real fun you can have. Um, it's, it's got this kind of stiff feeling that it, it doesn't, it doesn't self-center itself, um, which, which requires a lot of adjustment. It, it's constantly kind of wandering. And like, look at that. It just... It doesn't correct itself. Refinement wouldn't be its strongest point. Um, it does sound quite coarse whenever you rev it. Look at this exhaust pipe. <laughs> we want to look bigger than we are. <laughs> Tilt my sunroof. 450 quid extra. So it's got quite a solid Japanese feel 
without actually feeling solid, if that makes sense. Um, the dash feels well put together, yeah it's plasticky, but this kind of checkered pattern it's got is soft touch. Um, there are not that many rattles from the dash, there's something from over here which I think is one of these air vents. Um, but apart from that, it, it still feels pretty good. The suspension on the other hand, <laughs> there are plenty of knocks and bumps and creaks and groans from the front of it. And then when I reach about 40, 50, there's a wheel bearing hum, which I think could be two wheel bearings. Um, so, it, I mean, it's a tired car, but um, for the money, what do you expect? Those mats took uh, about half a second off the 0 to 60 time. Let's start her up. Yep, it makes annoying beeping noises. Um, it's got these air vents that were all the rage at the time, a horrible aftermarket stereo. So I can't show you what should be here. I presume it should just be a clock. Um, and whatever radio station you've got on. It does actually have, I just noticed this, behind the steering wheel on each side. Um, so behind here and behind here, it's got little buttons that must be for the volume and the um, station selection. Obviously I can't show you that because this hideousness is in the way. Um, drawer, nice looking heater controls with a thing that kind of continues down here. Um, they made a big thing about this storage when it was new, which in my mind is uh, rather rubbish. I mean, what, what do you put there? Um, good sized glove box, good sized door bins, and it's also got these little trays either side of the front seats, which I'm not sure what you put in there. It's really sad, but one thing that I really appreciated from the, the people who designed this center console was uh, you see by the handbrake here, there's these little gaps either side. Made it so easy to hoover a really difficult spot. Um, and it hasn't got the triangle of doom where you lose your phone and your keys and never ever get them back. That's a good point. In terms of quirks, well, Apart from having an armrest for the rear passengers and none for the driver, uh, Mitsubishi decided to put the fog light switches there and move the headlight beam adjustment to there. The Colt does have a very small boot, which is something it was criticised for at the time, but you can move the parcel shelf down um, six inches. That's useful. And you can fold these and slide them backwards and forwards. But it means you oh lovely blueberry anyone? But that's as good as it gets. So not the flattest or most useful loot bay. Shut up! Quite a steeply raked windscreen, um, which ends quite low. These little quarter light windows in front of the front windows, um, and visibility all around, except maybe for the rear windscreen because the rear headrests are so big, um, is very good. Big wing mirrors, yeah, visibility is very good. I'll just open my sunroof. 450 pound optional extra.
care that they might sleep tonight. It'll be a very easy car to live with. They're reliable. Um, it, oh, it's got the one touch three click indicators. Um, there's nothing remarkably bad about it. Nothing remarkably good about it either. Um, but it does what it says on the tin and in elegant spec. God knows I'd rather have this than a tired old beaten up Mondeo or a Vectra. So if you're after a rather ugly small car with a strangely good spec, handling that could have been good but isn't, plenty of MOT, I've got you sorted.